Today is a sad day for me. Uh, I would not have thought that uh, Sam Shamoon, whom I otherwise greatly appreciate, would uh, defend the Catechism of the Roman Catholic Church 841. I've made a video before about this where I go and show explicitly why this document is utterly indefensible. And today I'm going to play a little bit of Sam's um, uh, video here and I'm going to comment and show you the context, uh, the actual context of Vatican II, because the whole context, unlike what Sam is saying, unfortunately, in this video, is about being ecumenical, is about changing the attitude See, the problem is you cannot separate Muslims from Islam. Neither can you separate Islam from the Muslims. So what you could do, and this is why it surprises me why Sam would do this. But then again, I understand it because it might be because of his close relationship with William Albrecht. Now let's read 16. What's relevant does now talks about Muslims. Finally, those who have not yet received the gospel, those who haven't heard the gospel, are related in various ways to the people of God. There are various ways that they're related to the people of God. In the first place, we must recall the people to whom the testament from whom Christ was born according to the flesh. He's not talking about the Jews. On account of their fathers, this people remains most dear to God. For God does not repent of the gifts he makes, nor of the calls he issues. See how dispensational, the evil dis dispensational spirit is coming through and how they are butchering scriptures, Sam? You otherwise are so, you so easily call our Protestants, and rightfully so, they butcher scripture. But here, the, these are perverting scripture. They just butchered scripture right in front of your eyes and you did nothing. You see, you always have to take scripture in harmony. I don't have to tell you this, but here they are not because they are pitting scripture against scripture. They are basically using respect Jews or the Jewish faith, rather. But we don't. We don't even have to respect the Jews, right? We just have to respect the fact that God has a plan for the physical Jews, the physical lineage, to bring them. That's it. That's all we have to respect. But there is nothing about their beliefs not being perverted. That's not what is meant by that statement. Because the same Apostle Paul rebukes these Jews later on. Right? Christ obviously has already called them, uh, you know, blasphemers, sons of devils, uh, having Satan as their daddy and not God the Father. So it's all very clear already that they are Here, false. Alluding to Romans 11, 28, 29. But the plan of salvation There's nothing about ecumenism also here. includes those who acknowledge the creator. Right? Those who say there's one creator God and he's God of Abraham. That's what it's saying. Basically. In the first place among these, there are the Muslims. First place. See, so it even gives amongst all monotheists, it gives Muslims the first place, not even the Jews. So it puts the Muslims when it comes to, and we all know how important monotheism is. Even we would say, believing in one God is a, is a highly important matter. Right? Not putting other gods besides God is a highly important matter. So basically, what this is, we are Muslims for not being like those pagans who believe in many false gods. We put you among, even amongst those who are monotheists, like the Jews, the Jehovah's Witnesses. These are all monotheists, but they are in second and third place. The Muslims are the first place. Do you not see how wicked this is? How can you overlook this? Now, of course, it's subtle. I'm not saying they are saying that you don't preach the gospel to them. But you still give them an honor. It's like saying, you Muslims, you don't lack much. It's only a little bit. When it comes to monotheism, you are already champions. Maybe even more champions than many of our Roman Catholics. Maybe you can teach our Roman Catholic fellows a thing or two about monotheism as well. You see how evil this is, man? This is indefensible, Sam. Completely indefensible. Who professing to hold the faith of Iran. Yes, but it doesn't stop there. You can't. See, this is what the Roman Catholics also did in the past. That's why I, I completely blew that argument out of the water. 
because profession here is in a context of a true profession because it goes on to say that they actually adore the same one God. So it's not a mere profession where you know, in their heart they believe otherwise or that uh, their religion teaches otherwise. Along with us adore the one and there you go. God. And what it means here is they say we worship the God of Abraham. That's the God we worship. That's all it's saying, folks. No, that's not all it's saying, Sam. See, now you, you are deliberately... And not, maybe not deliberately, but because of your bias, because of your friendship with William Arbish, you're desperately trying to make it say the opposite of what it's actually saying. It is crystal clear. It is saying, along with us, they adore the one merciful God. Not that they profess to adore the one merciful God. Or that they merely profess to, uh, to adore the one true God. But that they do it. It's very clear. So they are saying basically the Muslim, just like John Gilchrist. So basically, yes, this catechism is in this place agreeing with uh, John Gilchrist. And of course, John, what John Gilchrist is saying is horrible. It's a disaster. The only difference is that John Gilchrist is not following a Protestant council when he's doing that. He's on his own. It's his own false idea that he has. And hopefully he will repent of it. Let's continue. If the Muslims say... Our God is the God of Abraham. That means they're saying they're worshiping our God. Yes, but they are saying or they're actually doing it are two different things, right? The council is not saying that they are merely saying. It could have said, and along with us, they also claim to adore the one merciful God. Okay, then I would have said still the overall context would would make clear that it's still teaching ecumenism, right? But then I could, you, you, have a, you would have a point, right? If it said that along with us, they claim to adore the one and true God, but that's not what it says. They do it. It's not merely a claim. It's not merely what they think. It's what they actually do, according to this catechism. After all, is our God not the God of Abraham? You get the point? You understand the point now? Before I move on? If a Muslim says he worships the God of Abraham, and the Jew says he worships the God of Abraham. Yeah, that doesn't make it true. Right. I mean, I can say that I'm a woman. That doesn't make me a woman, right? I can believe that I'm a woman, actually, but it doesn't. Like just like the transgenders, right? They would say, "Well, you know, a man would stand up and say, well, I think I'm a woman." Does it make it true? No, it doesn't. So, in the same way, a Muslim can say all he wants that I worship a Jew, can say all he wants that I believe in the God of Abraham. Sorry, you don't. You don't know the God of Abraham. You have no connection with the God of Abraham. In fact, you have Satan as your father. And you say you worship the God of Abraham. That means you are all professing to worship the same God. Now, if a Muslim says, I worship Vishnu, then he's not adoring the same God. Even if he says, he's, see, this is, I, I don't know, Sam, Shimon, man, this has to be, this really has to be emotional bias. Did you notice what you just said there? If somebody says, I'm professing to worship Vishnu, then I'm not worshiping the true God of Abraham. Actually, I can make an argument for the opposite. Because you can have a language out there that uses the word God, as uh, the word Vishnu, as a substitute for the gen generic word God and is a Christian. So it's more likely that somebody uh, says, I profess Vishnu, he could still be believing or if a, uh, if a person, such a person would say that I profess a mission, you could still be actually believing in the true God. The, the label is not the important. Now you're giving more importance to the label than to the actual concept behind it. I mean, this is just horrible. Just because the Muslims say we profess the God of Abraham does not mean that they, actually, they, they, that they adore the same, uh, that they adore the true God because they say, because they use the label Abraham. Because, uh, like you even say, the, the Abraham may not even be the same Abraham, right? They have a different Abraham. They have a different Jesus. They have a different Moses, right? They have a different Adam. And they have, obviously, then they have a different God. So this, what you just said, makes absolutely no sense, right? On the other hand, if somebody says that I believe in Vishnu, but by Vishnu, he means the true God, because words themselves don't, you know, can mean anything it, it depends on the context right then actually he could be that person could be believing in the true god the opposite of what you were saying 
It's not the label what credits them believing in the true God. It's the actual concept behind that label or behind that term. That's what the catechism is saying. They say their God is Abraham, which means they're worshiping the same God. No. <laughs> it doesn't say man. Oh, Sam, unbelievable. How you miss this? I I just can't say it. This is the whole point. Just because you say it doesn't make it so. You see? That's the point. It's the opposite. Although they say they profess to believe in the God of Abraham, they do not worship the God of Abraham. You see? Saying so doesn't make it so. And you know that very well because you have argued completely opposite in other ways, but here you're being completely inconsistent just to, you know, appease the catechism, which is sad. That's all it's saying. No, man. The Jews are worshipping the same God because they're saying, we worship the God of Abraham. They're not saying we worship Vishnu or Krishna or Shiva. Or And actually, it would have been better for them to say that because if they said that, they actually could be closer to the true God. It would be my argument because it's one thing you don't you haven't heard right about truths about the true god like the hindus or the buddhists it's another thing like to, that's why christological heresies can be more damning than uh you know people pagans like hindus buddhists and what have you you know so i can make actually make an opposite argument so the muslims are actually worse off because they have the audacity to claim that they worship abraham to, right which is deceptive when they actually don't Whereas the Hindu, he doesn't say that he worships the God of Abraham. So, okay, he's not being deceptive in that regard. He worships a false God, but at least he's not deceiving and may, making people think that I worship the same God as you. Right? So, if anything, I can argue the opposite. And this is the danger with this catechism. Because it puts Muslims on a pedestal in comparison to other monotheistic or pagan beliefs. I'm not saying that it puts it above Roman Catholicism. Obviously, Roman Catholic wouldn't be that obviously self-destructing, right? It's not like, oh, well, Muslims are even above us Roman Catholics. Of course not. But it's putting Muslims on a pedestal when it comes to all non-Christian beliefs. That's what it's doing. And that is dangerous enough. Because Islam should be at the bottom. It should be worse than atheism, actually, if you think about it. Right? Because atheists cannot be that deceptive. You say you don't believe in God, a Christian will already most likely say, say yeah, this is a joke. We all feel in our heart and mind that there is a higher power. So they stay away from atheism. Muslims, that's the danger. Because they say we believe in God, man. We have the true view of God. And you know all of that. We don't have to tell you this, man. I, I mean, I even feel awkward, it feels awkward to tell you this. And now you, you defend this ecumenistic uh, catechism. It's sad.